The BioCAD software allows us to be able to manipulate the model in any direction we need to look at. So as you can see here on the screen, we're able to move the model around. And uh, it has two features. It has a, um, a front view and a top view. By clicking the top view uh, segment, we're able to turn the model to a top view. And then we can rotate it on that same hinge axis. If we undo the lock key, we're able to manipulate the model in any direction we want, as you can see here on the video. Once again, if we click on to the top view with the locking mechanism, it will only rotate on that same hinge axis, as you're seeing here on the screen. If you unclick the lock, you can then manipulate the model in any direction uh, you need to look at. Notice that we're dealing with the multi-unit abutment, so all the interfaces will be above the soft tissue. Uh, by also clicking on the cylinder, we're able to bring the cylinders in. You click on the bar, click it, you bring the bars in. And then you also have to click on the model. Uh, the, the clear transparent model will, will come on and superimpose on top of the bar. So now you can kind of see your interclusal space you're dealing with. Another click on the model will make it a solid um, model. Uh, double click again will make it into the transparent mode. So you're able to see the bar underneath or superimposed under the denture setup. And this way we're able to look at all our aspects, interclusal space, bar height, cylinder height, a space underneath the bar relative to the, to the model or the soft tissue. By clicking on the bar, we're able to um, then able to manipulate the bar itself. So if we uh, click on a white dot, as you see now, we're able to actually move the bar and different segments up and down uh, to get you to the correct position that you, that you need to achieve. Once again, uh, every uh, denture setup is uniquely different and the interclosal space will vary with each case. In this particular case that we're reviewing on the video, there is uh, quite a bit of interclosal space and uh, we can make a very ideal bar. But in many instances, the um, interclosal space is very limited and it really kind of makes the case a little bit more complicated. We're also able to click onto the cylinder and we can adjust the vertical height of each cylinder in reference to the bar height. Once again, we just uh, can unclick the bar and we lose all the segments on the bar. At this stage, we are, um, can click back on the bar, and we're able to look at the distal cantilever segment of the bar, and we can uh, move the bar to the left or to the right or up or down uh, to any position that we need to do. Uh, this is done more simply by going to the top view and looking down straight on it. Uh, by clicking at the very end of the bar with the white dot, we're able to actually um, make the bar longer or shorter and also control it to the left or to the right or create the bar to be more to the lingual or more to the buckle. So as you see now in the video, I'm able to elongate the bar longer or I'm able to either click on it and make the bar shorter as you see now in the video. Depending on the AP spread of the implant position, uh, that will determine the cantilever length of the bar uh, distal segment. In this case here, we see we're trying to achieve uh, first molar occlusion, so I want to extend the bar distally to at least the uh, two-third position of that uh, first molar in, in length. This will allow us to be able to support uh, the denture teeth uh, underneath the bar uh, correctly. We're also able to click on the bar and move the bar um, to the buckle or to the lingual uh, what we're really looking for here is to have the bar to be a little bit in lingual version relative to the teeth so we can uh, have plenty of room for the denture teeth to be cut in around the, around the bar. Once again, from this front view segment, we're able to click on a white dot and raise the bar from the top segment uh, to any uh, desired height that we need, as you see here. So once again, depending on tooth position, you're able to manipulate the bar uh, to suit you the best situation uh, for bar strength, for hygiene issues, and also for uh, space for acrylic and for denture teeth. So the software is very versatile and allows you to make many adjustments and movements uh, to the bars. Here on this distal cantilever segment here, uh, by clicking on the white mark on the very back, we can lower the bar back down to the correct height we want. 
and make sure we have plenty of room for underneath the bar for acrylic and also room on top of the bar for the denture teeth and also the acrylic segment. So we're trying to find a nice balance and a harmony between uh, the all three factors. Hygiene, underneath the bar for cleansability, uh, strength of the bar uh, that is thick enough so it won't break, and also room for the acrylic and the denture teeth around the bar. Once again, by, play, by clicking onto the bar segments, we're able to uh, bring in all the, the markers on the top and bottom of the bar, and we're able to manipulate um, the bar in any direction we need to with all, this, with all those markers, as you see on the screen. Okay, now we're going to focus a little bit on to the cylinders. If you notice that the lingual segment of the cylinders are beveled, so by clicking onto the bevel segment, this allows us to... Uh, be able to bevel the cylinders. Instead of the cylinders being fully 360 round all the way to the top, we can use this, uh, this segment of the software to actually manipulate the cylinder on the lingual version up and down as you see now. And we're able to bring the lingual aspect of those cylinders into a bevel mold and this is going to allow us to have more tongue space. We're also able to rotate the cylinders on a 360 degree axis to uh, uh, position uh, the cylinder in the best favorable position to allow for maximum tongue room and not having the, the, the bar to be over contoured on the lingual. So as you can see here, we can move the model and we can look at it from different angles uh, to help see that bevel. As you see, we rotate down the model downward now. Now I can see more of an occlusal view to see uh, the segment of the bevel that I just did. Once again, I'm trying to create a, enough uh, tongue room as possible. By not having the cylinders full 360 contour, we can, we can bevel them down at the lingual to create maximum tongue space. The software also has a feature to be able to click on the screw segment, which actually allows the screws to come in and out of the bar to help you see the trajectory issues that you might be dealing with. On this particular case, there is plenty of room on the lingual segments. So as, as you see the screws going in and out of the software, it allows you to really see trajectory issues if you, if you have a problem. We're overlooking the whole design of the bar now, and once again, we're looking for uh, the cantilever to be correct. We're looking for enough space on top of the, of the bar for the denture teeth and acrylic. Um, we're manipulating the bar around uh, to look at the facial segment to make sure there's enough hygiene issue and that the bar is, is correctly positioned uh, within the, in the parameters we have to work with. Everything's looking really good at this stage. Now, now we're able to use the software to give us this side slice angle and uh, we, we see where I'm pointing at the bar. Um, you can also see the screen on the left is showing the side angle. And what I'm looking at now is we're looking at the measurement under the bar to the intaglio surface of the tissue. And um, each square represents one millimeter. The, the red vertical line you're seeing uh, dictates how many millimeters there is underneath the bar. So as I rotate, as I scan across the bar, um, you can see the little screen on the left is showing the space underneath the bar. And it's giving me a millimeter uh, reading there of exactly how much space I have. So this is another helpful tool. As we scan across, we can see we can see a, a side slice of the bar, and also we're able to measure from under the bar to the integral surface of the tissue to help us see exactly how much room we have underneath the bar. So you can see here in this distal segment, I'm scanning the distal segment, and I'm measuring the space from under the bar to the top of the tissue. As you see here, I... I purposely uh, uh, lower the distal segment of this bar to show how the chaining, the different measurement of the scanning is being done. So we can simply bring the bar back up to correct to the correct height. We can just scan and measure that. Once again, we can manipulate the bar in any direction we want to look at any direction we need to look at. Okay, we can click on the, the, the denture itself and convert it into a solid, or one more click on it will make it in a transparent mode. 
the transparent mode is very helpful to be able to see the actual um, uh, position of the teeth relative to the bar. You can also just click on the denture, remove the whole denture by itself, and just have the bar there by itself. Uh, here I'm actually uh, manipulating the one cylinder and the, um, the bevel effect. And once again, we can rotate that cylinder um, uh, 360 degrees to create um, the, the ideal lingual position. Here I'm doing some final checking of the of the case, and uh, that cylinder appears to be a little bit too tall, so I'm going to lower it down a little bit, as you see there. I lower the cylinder a little bit lower to keep it to the same height as the bar. Go to a top view. I'm looking at it. Uh, the bar's over the ridge, and it's looking at overview design, making sure I'm happy with everything. Rotating it around, just looking at all different aspects to make sure I'm happy with the bar design. And the strength and all the all the contacts. Looking at the bevels to make sure I got the bevels rotated in the ideal position to allow for maximum tongue space. Get a little bit of a rotation there. Get a little more ideal. That one looks pretty good. A little rotation there. Once again, we're looking for maximum tongue space to get it rotated to ideal position. Get okay, us a final look over everything. Remove the bar, remove the cylinders, right back to the multi-unit um, abutments. Click on the denture to get a solid denture or double click to get the clear transparent mode. Click on the cylinders, click on the bar. And we have a final, a final bar design.